know. <laughs> I hate I always started out like that, but I don't know what else to fucking say. Hey, welcome back! Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. It is uh, a new hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. A breath of fresh air. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's funny that we've seen these so many times, and yet we all like were quiet. Yeah, we were during quiet. long we didn't portions. Really talk much we hardly there. talked. Yeah, for for as much compared to the other ones. We were engaged in the movie. I say mm -hmm. we flip it. What's bad in this movie? Yeah. Okay, flip it. What's bad? Um, Frame obscuring special the effects. The new rocks. Yeah, the, the new, new rocks. some of the new stuff they added. Uh, some of the old CG from two, uh, 1997 is, just looks garbage. The worst thing about this film, as it is, is the job of the HUD scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Yeah. It's that, really bad. And Can the dewback walking right in front of the camera. Dewback, yeah. All the, about 17 dewbacks added to the film. Yeah. Can you think of anything that wasn't a sort of you're tampering with it kind of can you think of anything in the original movie well, I was, no yeah i always thought the trash can robot was kind of dumb looking which one the one the, in the, oh, on the, oh, the one that, yeah. walk, that walks slow mm -hmm. yeah because it clearly looks like a dude in a trash can suit yeah it know? definitely looks like a trash can with legs yeah um i think mark hamill's a little whiny but not too bad That's a little a slight, bit slight criticism nothing bad yeah i think um the the Death Star attacking the Rebel base with no support ships or Star Destroyers or any sort of thing other than the Death Star. Yeah, I mean, I, there was just like a budget. budgetary constraint. That's what I was going to say about the uh, CG edition of the Stormtroopers when Han is running. I mean, that is one of those things where I honestly could feel like Lucas did want to have a lot more Stormtroopers in there, and he right. just didn't have the budget for it. But I still don't think there's any need to go back in and change that. Uh, just let it I mean we still got the joke I mean you don't need what would you say is the worst I mean it's, I think it's easy to say oh well they added the Java scene wasn't needed but what was the biggest like change that they made that you felt like affected it was it you think it's the Han shooting Han shooting first or second they Greedo really shooting first pan, they, that one they seem to pair it down they seem to it trim a lot of it fast yeah, it they almost so make fast. it look like they shoot at the same time you couldn't now. tell what's going on yeah, basically never, eliminated that the scene Less than a second long. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. never yeah. noticed the crate dragon yell though. Yeah, they cha they changed, changed it a up. bunch of that's, times. That's, that's, I've never that's, noticed that. The crate dragon yell is horrible. I, I always thought it was like the Banthas or the Sand people making that noise because they saw him coming up and they were mm -hmm. running. Yeah. I, I didn't know he was to be making that noise. I would think that the Jabba thing would have bothered me more as far as the stuff you add. <clears throat> the, th the stuff that bothered me was when they first go into Tatooine. Like all there's just yeah, yeah. stuff everywhere being CG added. Droids. CG City. Yeah. Funny, funny yeah. deal. Yeah. And so some of it, especially because you you get the sense that like the the planet is very sparse, you know, and that this would be just like an outpost and there wouldn't still wouldn't be a lot of people there, you know? Yeah. yeah kind of I agree. Like, you know, it wouldn't be this populated. Yeah, it's like now it's like this kind of booming little Desert metropolis. Yeah, I, my theory on it is that none of it should be altered. We should be able to experience it the way it was originally released, like remaster it, but don't like clean it up. Yeah, as far as the the look of the film, I mean, it definitely looked good, but I don't feel like this was a blow me away transfer uh -huh. of an older film, um, especially after seeing the work that went into the Jaws Blu-ray. To see them put these out, where I don't think this is from a 4K master, or even I don't even know if it's from a 2K master, but it didn't look that good. There was a lot of color shifting between shots. Uh, skin tones were off. Um, you could definitely tell the the sound quality or wasn't as good as the sound prequels. mix was not as good as the prequels. No, but I mean that's to be expected. Right, right. The lightsabers were actually kind of inconsistent. There was a lot of inconsistencies in that, which is. But, you know, was the way it's always been, yeah. but I don't understand why that can't be fixed. Yeah, because they clearly but cleaned the up the part with Walmart Vader and everywhere. Obi Wan fighting. Yeah, and when he's doing that training thing, it looks it looked white terrible. Almost yeah. still, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, there's not a lot you can say about this movie that's not been said. Um, I would almost bet everyone watching this video has seen this film. So. Um, if you haven't, go watch it right now. It's a great, now. great <laughs> movie. <laughs> Were you guys in love with Carrie Fisher as a kid? No, I've At never. This point, I've or never, not been told I've never not thought until, she was that until Empire for me. I thought Empire, she stands out a lot I was more. never really uh, I never, was, I never was either, but 
No. You know. She always must had a more mature. She seemed older. She seemed her, similar to Han's her, age. Her, exactly. Her banter to me, like, is matching to Han, which is what I like about yeah. them. And seeing it go further in Empire, which we'll see. Yeah, she's such a strong female character for a that's sci-fi why I movie like in the seventies. Like, not because she's so blatantly, oh my god, look how well, hot she is. Like, yeah, but she's definitely age, good looking. Her age is also mm-hmm. like she has such a full, rich voice. It seems like women that age don't have that anymore. Like girls around twenty. I don't all see. Back. I've thought about this. I think what you're saying is what you said when we were watching the older movies. How, or actually, you said it this movie. How you'll sometimes see people being cast that look like regular people. Right. And I think in her case, she would have never been cast today as that role. If it was something where they had a lot of money behind it, yeah. they would want to go for someone who's obviously real attractive yeah. and then like the looker or brings a certain thing. It's just, but in reality, so she acts stupid. more mature for someone that's that young. You that don't want to see Megan Fox play that part? That <laughs> just bugs no. the shit out of me. Because yeah. like, it should be your acting ability first. Exactly. It's kind of like Daniel... Even uh, with Harrison Ford, like we talked about. Like, uh, he's known as one of the best looking guys there is, but it's because of his acting ability. Not that because he has that charisma. He's going to draw in people because he's good looking. Automatic charisma as soon as he's on screen. Yeah. It's funny, like, I think it makes me think about Ralph Macchio was like 25. Oh, he no, he was older than that. Like, in Karate Kid. He's like, older than that. It's, it is, kind of, which is, makes you wonder if they would do that, even though you said, how old did you say she was? 19. She was 19. She just acted more mature, but I don't know. Brandon, what do you feel uh, about the impact of the uh, first Star Wars film on, because we're kind of sci-fi fans, Star Trek oh, yeah. fans. Well, know. I mean, it, um, it changed the way the movies were made, the way they were promoted, the way they were merchandised, the way they were produced, the way they were, the technology, the, the, the effects. I mean, everything in the, it changed everything about films. But at the yeah. same time, it wasn't a, really an original idea. It's a space western. That right. Takes Kurosawa, ideas from Kurosawa yeah. and, 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 and Western. Flash Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, Flash Gordon. And so the ideas weren't really original. It was just that George Lucas and the people that with him that made the film and did it differently than anyone else had done before. Yeah. Yeah, they reimagined old ideas and. and kind of like what Quentin does, really, in his yeah, own very much so. Yeah. yeah, to a degree. Um, I think that is. Uh, if you go back and watch a lot of those old serials that he took a lot of these ideas from, they're so bad. And that's what like always bothers me about movies today remaking things that are so good. It's like go back and find ideas that maybe weren't executed as well and, yeah. and update that, you know, and kind of work with it. So in the, it's, it, I want to mention books. one thing. You know, it's easy for people to miss how the do backs on screen, <laughs> the one He directed this film <laughs> Yeah, he did not direct Empire right. and Return, which a lot of people love, and yet he still directed these prequels we just got done watching. Right. And I could not help but think, I know it's his first time out. He's you know he's got a lot to prove. What to, is this movie? Yeah, like it's not I'm his thinking, first time out. Well, he no, in American terms of like TNT making TNT sci-fi TNT. and all that, I'm talking about just what he chose to create as far as this genre. <laughs> but it's like one of those things where I'm thinking like, why is it that he was able? to take what you just mentioned, like go back and take things that inspired him, say, hey, I want to go to Flash Gordon and kind of yeah. add that into it. Yet, he somehow could not manage because to it, translate that into the prequel. Because like, when he made this film, it wasn't all of his control and all of his creative. Yeah. yeah. His and and supposedly the first cut of it is horrible. horrible. So, yeah. to, you know, uh, to a crib from Red Letter Media, they said art from adversity. You know, it's like... Yes. You know, but these these three films that we're watching now were a team, and it was collaborative effort. Right. And all sorts of input from producers and other writers. The best of the best in every field. Right. And then when we make the prequels, it's all George. You know. So you know, you look at um, the film. If you took a lot of the special effects that that ILM created, the space, the dog fights. Um, if you take away the score, if you take away a lot of those elements, the the film would not be what it is right it's definitely the perfect storm of all these things coming together to create which i feel is one of the most influential films of all time and i don't mean that in like a top 100 standpoint i, I mean like a top three okay. standpoint mm-hmm. i mean this film created you know jaws got it started but for me i think this film is the better representation of modern cinema mm-hmm. the way we deal with it now uh, and as much as I love it, it, it ushered in an era 
that I don't love so much and got rid of an era that I did like, which was the 60s and 70s raw, realistic, gritty cinema. So uh, I, I love this film, but I think I'd like to see movies go back a little bit and not try to all be Star Wars yeah. from now on. Everything's trying to be that. Well, I think that's another thing. You, you wouldn't look at a movie like this in terms of being simple, but in context of what came after, mm -hmm. this movie looks way more simplified and just straightforward, like you said, action-adventure, uh, and it, it gets more and more complex, I think, as it goes along, especially with Justin, today. what would you say to people that want to criticize us for referring to this as science fiction? Many people refer to it as science fantasy. You're just trying to like focus on like things like you can't have sound in space and and all those kind of technical things. I mean, right. I don't know. It's just fun. I mean, sci-fi for me is just anything to do with space, space creatures, <laughs> just exploration, anything like that. I kind of agree. Star Trek. I mean, is a lot Star more Trek. on the sci-fi side rather than sci-fi fantasy but I've never been offended by calling it that way I mean it's right. it's, it's just it does fantasy. blend yeah yeah mm -hmm. no no uh -uh. <laughs> this is science fantasy okay right you laser the, swords usually the people touting that the most are the most uneducated people in science <laughs> well, let me ask you this even though it's not Star Wars related the more recent Star Trek films Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though they lean a little bit more oh, sci-fi fantasy than sci-fi? Yeah, compared to the other Star Trek films. Yes, they they make a uh, more um, they they have a more playful yeah. spirit to them, and I wouldn't necessarily say they break any any rules about that, mm -hmm. but I would say they structure their films in a more fantasy way, mm -hmm. uh, but. Yeah, it's definitely obvious why JJ went in to do Star Trek. Yeah, and he, like you could see, he definitely coming. brought elements of this uh -huh. into that. Yeah. So we're about to begin the greatest science fiction film ever made, <laughs> The Empire Strikes Back. Um, it's, I mean, I'll tell you. You don't even have to watch the next video. It's all gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all possible. See, it's gonna be harder for us to struggle in finding the bad things in. There isn't. The it's the one of the closest to being perfect films I think ever made. Uh, whether this special edition will maintain that, I don't think they made enough changes to, to really cause any issues. But we'll yeah, see. This one was the least tampered with. I think in this one he uh, he changed Vader's not his dad anymore. Yeah, so he's, that, his, he's his first cousin. Yeah, so that's going to be a yeah. problem. But uh, we'll we'll you know get going on this. Uh, everybody feeling all right? Mm -hmm. Tired. Yeah, yeah, kind of tired. Right, these are kind of long, so, and these are so the same. You know what I mean? Like usually we see different actors and things coming in different movies. Right. It's like these are the same. I, we've seen C three PO R two D two a well, lot. I, I was expecting because we've seen these films so many times that it would be kind of like, you're, you know you're enjoying them, but okay, I've seen this, and now I'm getting right. tired. I'm, it's like you said. I don't think quiet, we've ever sat down and watched these together. Together, no, yeah, I don't think so. Absolutely not. I think it just shows you what a, a good movie oh, will do. Me and Brandon have watched Empire probably three times <laughs> together. <laughs> All right, so we'll get started on that, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.